Hello YouTube, I'm Jack Clark, Deacon Musk today, coming to you with another video, hello, how are you? So yes, my hand's doing a thing today, it's kind of like, either like a devil thing, or Wolverine in his younger days, I don't quite know, I woke up with it like this, this is not conscious decision to have weird hair, but anyway, to the actual topic of today's video, I want to talk about Primal Origins, because it's nearly at the TCG, and I'm uber excited, because of course this set introduces a lot of legacy support for over 20 archetypes, and I have been working with Battery Men at the moment, and I know the legacy support from Battery Men, um, Battery Men 9 Volt, isn't in Primal Origins, which makes my blood boil and makes me a very sad puppy, but, of course, in being in Duelist Advent, but my point is, that a lot of decks get really, really good with these one or two cards they've been given in Primal Origins, and of course, to a lesser extent, Barrow and Ninevolt into this advent. Um, I really like Legacy Support. A lot of us, which are a lot of players who are long established and have grown up with Yu Gi Oh!, have seen archetypes come and go, and it's nice to see archetypes get new support. It's really, really pleasing because it means a deck that you loved five years ago gets a new lease of life, and that's what I love about like the Batterman's for example. But with the Battery Men, as my example, they get 9 volt and they are astronomically good now. I say that, um, I have not been able to test them in a more more formal meta uh, sense. Um, I've played against um, meta decks and such, but you will never get a real grasp of what a deck is capable of until you actually are able to play test it and actually play it in it in its respective format. So I've been playing Battery Man with 9 Volt and it's ridiculous, it's really, really good. And after playing like my brother a couple of times with his vampire deck, I've come to the conclusion that Battery Men with 9 Volt are better than vampires in their entirety. With this in mind, with the new support that decks are going to be getting in Primal Origins, I would be struggling to see well, I wouldn't struggle to see. I'd be expecting the um, various old decks that get like a new card to become much better than other more recently established stuff, simply because they have had a long, they've had archetypes um, be released in the past, and you get one more card. Whilst we have archetypes these days, which are coming out, which get a big bulk of support, and then they just are not talked about again. So stuff like Batman, Gusto, um, Koki Meru's are all decks that I've had support in the past, and I've had quite a lot of support, but I've not been able to compete today. Are getting really astronomically good support to be able to keep up today. But because they're getting the support, which is very very good, it means that they may be much better than some of the more tier 2 stuff. So I'm not saying they're going to be like tier 1, I am just saying that with 20 plus archetypes getting support in Primal Origins, what if these are going to be the decks that define a format? Gustos get Pilika, Descendant of Gusto, which gets its effect when it's normal or special summoned, allowing you to get a Wind Tuner from your graveyard. That's really very good. Especially considering you can turn it with um, Emergency Teleport for instant rank freeze or instant level 6 synchros, and that's quite good for one card, no minusing, just one card, literally bosh, instant XEs, and as much as it's not rank 4, that's pretty damn good considering Gusto's actually have a win condition of their own into freeze, which is just silly and allows your opponent to take all of your damage, which is really good. We've got Kokimera with their own rotor, literally just rotor, add one Kokimera monster, or no, a Kokimera card from your deck to your hand, not even restricted to monsters, and an additional effect on top of that. A card like that is something that would go on the ban list if the deck itself actually did well. And Kokimero have multiple decks that they can utilize. They have a Beast Warrior variant with a new Beast support, which they greatly appreciate. And now they've got their own rotor on top of the Tenkies and the Urnite they use. The Urnite's now consistent. Oh dear God, Urnite's now consistent, allowing you to have an effect. Effectively, you get a completely free um, Summoner Monk with 2k attack. Um, and OTK possibilities out of the wazoo because um, an MX Saber Invoker is also a thing. So there are lots of decks that are getting support. I mean, Evo Singularity! Oh, dear God! Evo decks now get to use Solder and not have to use the really crappy level 5 and level 6 monsters. And it's really annoying because my brother is using Evo's and there's nothing quite like being able to drop Dolka, Lagia, and Solder on the field within the space of one, maybe two turns if to push. So. Of course, Primal Origins, leasing lots of new stuff. I want to know what you think in the comments down below, whether or not you think that some of the archetypes that are getting legacy support, quote-unquote, are going to make any kind of impact 
on the meta. I am particularly interested in the Gustos, maybe, but mostly the Kokomeru stuff because, of course, Kokomeru, like I said, they have multiple um, decks they can use. And I'm looking forward to giving Rockstar a new lease of life, especially considering Trap Tricks have, what, well, they have their... Um, Mermilio, which allows me to search for trap holes, mean more back row, more stun, more raging faces, and plus being able to search for your own optional Doom Caliber Knight. Oh, that doesn't get much better than that. So say so in the comments down below, or as a video response, tell me what your favourite card that is a legacy support in Primal Origins, and then tell me what you think the impact they're going to have on the meta. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel for future releases. But that's pretty much it. And yeah, so I'm Jack Clark, Deacon Musketeer. More videos coming out to you soon. But until then, goodbye.